Hey everybody, it's a beautiful end of summer day, or it's just a beautiful day, I don't know. Why do we have to categorize everything? I guess just so we can get our shit together, or keep our stuff together. So, I am just, just wanted to make a little video to let you guys know that I wanted to start sharing more about what I've been working on and what I've been trying to accomplish outside of just my regular performance demands, which, if you don't know, they entail uh, a good amount of studio work and sessions for other artists. Uh, of course, I'm making my own material as well on a daily basis, which is something that I also aspire to to share, to teach, basically, to anybody who's interested. And I've also developed different ways to approach playing musical instruments. Uh, and I've got many different creative ways that I've uh, discovered that have helped many people in the past, so I know that they work, that kind of connect the dots for string players if you're crossing over from classical. I know that there's a, lo there's a lot of people out there now in comparison to maybe 20 years ago that are sharing this information and uh, what I feel is really helpful is that there's now a community of string players who are improvisers there are communities on Facebook of jazz players uh, oh, that's really cool sweet uh, that's how I feel, man. I'm vibrating on the rainbow frequencies today. And uh, I was just playing my uh, one of my violins, and I'd like to share uh, this video of me testing out a violin that I f feel it was either a prototype or probably just a, a handmade replica of a kind of a Zeta Jazz-style violin. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. And I've got it routing through just to, to get the technical stuff out of the way because I mean what's the point of making a video if I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing if you're a string player and you want to know how I get this sound it's kind of like pointless if I'm not at least going to tell you what I'm doing so I'm routing my violin via a wireless shore uh, system it's the kind that has the pedal uh, it's got the tuner pedal it's just like a little tiny module like this big and uh, on my pedal board, I've got that going into an ego booster. And then I've got that going into my uh, Grace Audio. I think it's Grace Audio, Grace Design. They're fantastic. It's called the Alex, A-L-I-X. And it's a fantastic preamp. And then I've got everything else that is on my pedal board going through their effects loop. So I basically have, it, it has a quarter inch stereo to uh, you know send and return and I've got it going into a uh, volume pedal which is an Ernie Ball stereo volume pedal I can use it as stereo I'm just going mono right now just to keep it simple going into an even tight H9 that I have upgraded and uh, it's fantastic also then that goes into a, uh, a pedal that I'm not using right now but it's a synth pedal a bass and it's like a basically like an analog synth pedal by Pigtronics. And then from there, I'm going stereo out of that pedal, which can be beefy. Even if you just bypass the uh, synth effect kind of like by turning it down, it uh, has a it has some balls to it. <laughs> it's going into a memory man, which it's a memory man uh, stereo. Memory, memory Man with uh, Azurai. So it's actually a digital unit. There's no analog uh, controls to it. Like if you turn the speed of the delay up or down, it's not gonna go or like analog delay pedals do for those of you who know what I'm talking about. And, uh, but the nice thing about it is you can use this pedal as the last pedal on the chain or as a way to route two different 
effects chains together without having to deal with uh, buying an expensive pedal that does the same thing. Basically, when you press the on button on the Memory Man, even if your mix, which the mix, like basically the effect mix, is all the way down, it activates the second channel, the stereo channel, and it can, it can, if if it doesn't detect the the output going out in stereo, if it just detects a single mono output, um, it will combine those two signals into one, so you can get a fatter signal, which is really great. Or you could have two different effects, uh, you know, chains basically, and combine them right there as the last stop. And uh, I, I do like the circuitry of my uh, Temple Audio pedal board. There's something about when you plug into the quarter inch uh, input and output, uh, I guess you could call them buses, or uh, it's just basically like a, a buffer at the end of the chain. Uh, which I have basically a little tiny cable uh, that I got a bunch of these real flat cables that fit really well onto uh, pedal boards and basically minimize the footprint of quarter inch guitar connecting cables and it, it is incredible. I highly recommend updating your boards with these pedals, or I mean with these uh, cables. There's two different kinds, um, but I basically have, it. I'll, I'll show you a picture of it um, maybe even, you know, I'll edit this video and just insert it. Uh, it allows you to send the, uh, the signal in a, in a unique way. So I'm basically just like putting, it looks like it's just going uh, out of the memory man into this quarter inch. And then uh, for whatever reason, it, it looks like it's like a bridge in some way or another. I'll explain that later, but basically uh, what I'm doing is sending that signal back to the uh, to another even tight H9 and then uh, that allows for me to just plug in the uh, the cables that are the uh, effects loop in such a way that I could just easily plug them in and out and just set up for a gig in like literally one minute. Um, so this is like a plug-and-play type of deal, and I've and it, it's all being powered by this brand new Eventide power supply. I think they've been out for maybe six months or maybe maybe a year, maybe less. They're they're really great. They can power basically any nine volt, twelve volt pedals. Um, nine volt goes up to six hundred sixty milliamps. Twelve volt I think is uh, up to. I don't know. It, it's interesting because the Eventides can take either 12 volt or 9 volt, which is pretty rocking. Uh, they're very versatile pedals, and uh, there's there's th this power supply in itself de deserves a whole video. But basically, I'm going out of my uh, my preamplifier, which is serving as the effects loop as well, sending that to an AER through its effects loop input. So there's no EQ or anything activated on this amp the way I have it set up, and then I've got it being sent out of that into a Roland, no hold on, into a uh, a Bose S1, and from there it's being sent into a Roland keyboard amp, the, uh, I forget what the model is, but I think it's like a 10 inch, or 12 inch speaker, 12 inch, and uh, it's the 100 watt version. And then from there it's going into this Moog amplifier um, it's it's a theremin amp so the full the full sound is what you'll hear first and then I basically at the very end of the video cut out the sounds and uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll make this a video and I'll have a playlist so basically the videos will segue into one another so if you just want to skip this video uh, I'll, I'll make sure that I let that be known at the beginning of this video and if you're watching this far Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mark Woody at, and I am a rogue violinist. Uh, and I love just.
this, this search for having a great sound. Uh, this, this instrument, by the way, is a passive instrument. So uh, I have input. I have uh, instruments that have uh, basically an output that has a, a preamplifier built into the electric instrument. That's my bridge, Lyra. And uh, that's nice, but I like this passive. It, it's got more balls or something especially with the setup I've got because this ego booster gives it a nice little it just it it stands out more in the mix I don't have it gained high at all it's the type of pedal that'll crackle a little bit uh, I think that has a uh, some type of uh, I don't even know what they're called neo di diode uh, some type of metal bis not bismuth but uh, man Whatever it is, uh, it, it, it's made by these guys called the Smart Guys Factory, and they don't make them anymore. And I actually told John Luc Ponti about this, this pedal, and because he had liked my sound on some recordings that I made with Rogue Chimp. We have an album called Embark. You should check that out on iTunes, Spotify, Google, whatever, Google Music. Uh, it's on YouTube. So uh, we don't make any money from that type of listening. As you know, streaming is not very lucrative when it comes to music, but you can purchase our album at roguechimpmusic.com. That's R-O-G-U-E-C-H-I-M-P-M-U-S-I-C dot com. So, and you can check me out. Uh, please like and subscribe this video if you want to see more of this. And I'm going to try to post it to Facebook too, and in a bridge form maybe, but... Uh, I might just upload it to YouTube, so we'll see. But, uh, yeah, thanks to, uh, I, I hope I get this right, Jacob Schlecki. Oh, my God, man, forgive me. You can mispronounce my name all you want. <laughs> he's a cellist, and he's got the, the pickuptest.com, and uh, he's a fantastic uh, just wealth of, of information and a great collaborator and person who's really put together a lot of a good body of of the, the type of information that uh, that I'm I'm sharing now, you know, kind of inspired by his just doing what he's doing without caring how long the video is going to take necessarily, just because people are detail oriented. With that said, enjoy the. Uh, the test of this pickup, which is an LR bags pickup, and uh, it's just a brief little video I made in my uh, home studio, which is in shambles right now, but you know, I think you'll dig it. It's a nice instrument, you know, and uh, this this might be a good argument that uh, in in favor of not needing a uh, preamp when you've got a piezoelectric pickup. That's my theory. Is that uh, you don't need to have, an, let me clarify, you don't need to have a pickup that's going out of the instrument into a preamp before it goes into the wireless uh, transponder. Basically, that's my theory. I think it's, it, you, with a piezoelectric pickup, the whole point of having a preamp is, is generally so that you can buffer the, uh, that electrical relationship that happens. Um, that's why LR bags has that pair acoustic di and they've got a small one and a bigger one that is battery powered and uh that's the uh, stage di or what's called the, the venue di i had that somebody stole it <laughs> i left it somewhere of course so finders keepers i guess looser sweepers but my insurance covered that so i was able to get a tone bone pc pre which i wasn't so happy with just because i kind of Put my pedals through the test before I got this uh, Temple Audio pedal board really uh, fully hooked up. I have one of the first bottles, so I've got a nice case for it. It's a uh, Pelican case, so it, it's the uh, largest size case that can be checked in on an airplane, and it's pretty fat. Uh, I think you'll like it. You throw it into a river. <laughs> That's their claim to fame. You throw the you can throw this this case into a river and it will not get your equipment wet, it'll float, and uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, I've been using it for years, and they have this nice pedal mounting system. 
using plates and uh, it's very effective I mean you could it, it pretty much keeps all your you know precious petals that you've acquired uh, protected from jostle, being jostled around um, and it's even better than velcro in the sense that your, your petals aren't going to move at all you can get industrial strength velcro and do the same thing in fact all of my petals pretty much have both the temple audio plate and industrial strength velcro lining the other parts of them so that um, they're basically uh, supported when they're on the temple board and when I want to bring them onto my nano pedal board which is a what are they called pedal it's what everybody's got you know slip in my mind right now but I've got a lot of, I've got a lot going on today so I need to get back to work and check this out check out the the next video and check out some of my other videos and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like what you see and you want to improve your tone essentially or get some new angles on how to approach practicing and uh, I looked at a lot of guys that are really great educators and, and very very established and skilled jazz violinists uh, one of them being Christian Howes who puts out a lot of really great material and Zach Brock is another one of my favorite electric violinists and educators I have yet to take his courses and I, I kind of have been putting it off because I really didn't have the extra funds to put into it and uh, I also feel like uh, it's important for me at this point simply because I I mean whatever I'm doing is is working to kind of document the way I'm doing it so that it can add to that body of knowledge but uh, I, I am uh, a, a huge uh, firm believer and supporter in uh, learning and endless mastery and you know if you can learn how to be a, a better learner <laughs> you can develop that skill infinitely uh, you can learn so many new things in one day you know it's incredible and uh, I've spent time with some really awesome people and even had the, the good fortune to connect to some of the the most Incredible yogis of our age and uh, basically integrated a lot of that knowledge in how I teach I also study dance since I was a kid I'm not a great dancer or anything like that but there's certain things about posture and about the way that you bring the instrument to you that are universal to any instrument and that's priceless information so I mean I'm just sharing what I know and I want to share everything I can because we only have a limited amount of time on this planet in this realm as who we are so uh, fortunately I've got enough talents and skills and music and supporters and just blessings a great partner she's just absolutely hands down my rock and I wouldn't be able to do what I do without her so shout out to Lily I love you honey and uh, thanks for shooting this video which everybody's gonna watch now player friends have a great day I just wanted to kind of follow up with a little video to show you what this mock Zeta prototype I think it's just an art like a artisan violin made by somebody that might have been local but whoever made it they 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 designed the body of the violin very nicely and it has similar characteristics to, I guess, a Zeta, but it's got this nice Ellerbags bridge, which hasn't even been cut. I took a bit of time to, tr to reset this up and wind up the strings. Let's hear how it sounds through a variety of different amps that are all basically co <laughs> connected to this pedal board. Um, this is just flat EQ all the way across, going through an even tight H9 black hole just like cracked in like five percent so other than that effect it's a very very clean sound <laughs>
Thanks for watching. My name's Mark. What are you at? Have a great day.